It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day, and it is biannual maintenance in Coronado at the Pincuses. This is such a cute installation, and I'm so thrilled to share it with you and walk through with you and show you all of the growth over the last six months. But before I do, I just wanted to let you all know how moved I was by your comments after yesterday's video where I posted about Pride Month and DFS celebrating love and inclusion and acceptance. You were so vulnerable and you were so real and it, it really moved me to tears. I'm so thankful that we have a community here where people feel safe enough to share those kind of real feelings. I love you all so much and I appreciate you more than you will ever know. And nothing brings us together like succulents, right? There is no plant on the planet with more diversity than your, than your succulents. And what do we do with them? Do we put them all together in rows of the same thing or do we mix it up? Well, you know what we do, we mix it up and that's where the beauty lies. So, ugh. Um, doesn't mean it ain't a hot mess sometimes though, right guys? This aloe cameronii put on a show and now we need to cut off all of the old flower spikes. This is not a monocarpic plant. Aloes will rebloom, so don't worry about it dying. It monocarpic. won't. Monocarpic meaning that it blooms and dies, like a lot of agaves and aeoniums, to, for example. Here's the situation here with this crassula sunset. Uh, Argentia, uh, those purists of you, those collectors are always so horrified when, you know, I complain about size and growth. But this is a plant here in San Diego that is very, very common. It's very easy to grow. And I really like to keep it looking compact in this type of presentation. What I'm looking for is this aloe cameroni I stand to be the thriller in this arrangement. And then I want the portolacaria and the crassulas to kind of be under skirts, you know, understory plants. So this is starting to get a little too big, a little too leggy. So I'm gonna dig that out, cut it up and reset it. Uh, this undulata, we will probably have to do that next visit. I think it's okay right now though. Um, our dear client Connie is very concerned about the mangaves, <laughs> jaguars. They like it too much here and they are growing out of control. I have five stands of mangave and we've got to dig them up, divide and reset and really, you know, scale this down. This is a this front portion of the garden that I absolutely adore. This has been reinvented at least twice. We every single plant in here has been dug up cut off and reset at least once with maybe the exception of the milii ready red but everything else and the ruchia i haven't done it to the ruchia but everything else in here has been cut and reset like look at this look at this orbiculata for example you know this plant uh has a tendency to also get kind of leggy and last time we were here it was huge we cut it up we reset and you know, it looks pretty good. Let's see, see those little roots that it's, you know, it's making an effort to reroot into the ground. That's kind of the idea. And look at, see, it takes a while. You know, this is six months and that's all we've got. But look at that, the plant has survived for six months with basically no roots. Amazing. Okay. Moving on. Uh, ha -ha. So these little packy phyla moonstone, you know, these blooms are spent. So we will trim all of these off, trim off this ruticope bloom. All of the Crassula, Orgialis, and Bractea are fabulous in this garden. Look at this glorious stand of agave attenuata. These at some point will have to be cut and reset, but not yet. Look at this Orgialis. Perfection. Love it. What Mallory is hiding under the citrus tree. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I love growing food in a landscape. So this is a tree that is an exception to my no tree rule, but it is job security. We will spend 30 minutes picking all the leaves up um, on the rocks for sure. 
Okay, uh, then client loves color, 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 color. As you can see, uh, they're really into the primary colors. So sticks on fire was kind of a must in this garden, but we're containing it in a pot to control the growth. Right now, you know, it's not really on fire. This, this plant ebbs and flows with the temperatures and with the daylight hours. So right now it's going into dormancy. You know, this little carunculated Echeveria, probably a sea dragon, is shrinking in size. Uh, so we may want to think about moving this into the ground or uh, cutting it and resizing yeah. it. Um, who knows? We'll see when we get there. Look at this Morganionum, this burrow tail. Isn't that so stunning in that pot? Just wow. And how about this for an arboretum? This Aeonium's work off. Look at how tall it is. But you know what? In this grouping of plants, I don't hate that. I think it's fairly well balanced. So I may very well let that ride. This has become something of a hot mess. The ruchia and all of these little sedums are completely run amok. So those will get yanked out, cut up and reset. There's a little Apache aloe, Apache hiding underneath this gorgeous Joe Hoke that we'll dig out and stick somewhere else. And the Faro cactus, look at that. Absolute perfection. What a gorgeous, stunning new mom. Look at that cute little baby. Every time I come into this garden, I warn the client that's gonna bloom out one day and we'll have to replace it. But for now, that Joe Hoke is the showpiece in this front courtyard. So here we go, blah, 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 blah. Everything is fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Growing just as I had hoped up to the crescendo of the Petalanthus bracteus. What a great thing for the corner here in this garden. And with a little more water, this will bloom out and we will get a lot more of these spectacular flowers and lots of leaves. You know, now that I look at it, look here, look how dry. I'm, Greg is here and I'm gonna have him check the irrigation as well because a lot of these plants are looking really way too dry for stressed. Coronado. Yeah, very stressed out. This is what, December, so. what stress looks like. Look at that color, that's insane. You know, another way you can tell too sometimes if a plant is stressed due to not enough water is the leaves get extra thick and leathery. And that's kind of a touch and feel thing. Look at how this Rushi is climbing up on that boulder. Love that. But this little corner needs some work. These Aeonium silk are spectacular. You're gonna see some in other areas of the garden that are not so spectacular. And that, my friends, is microclimates at work. Ah, yes, and this Trigona, uh, not nearly as happy as the one that's in the ground out front. It's got some scarring on it. It looks like it might have got a little fungus. Not looking super awesome. One solution that I can think of is to turn the pot. Oh, hi little old doggy. What a cute little old doggy, Hannah. All right, then along in here in the courtyard, this gets amazing cir air circulation. We're so lucky. Um, everything is just growing literally like a weed. This is ficus repens or creeping fig. The client loves it. She wants this to cover the entire wall. So that's the goal with the ficus repens. We will be sizing. Here's more of those giant mangaves. Also, her bromeliads are running amok. So we're gonna divide some of those. And this Tratascantia, which looks so fantastic right now, we're gonna dig up and move it to the back. So she's not constantly having to clip it off of the sidewalk. Oh God, everything looks fantastic. This little narrow section here I did in Kalanchoe Orgialis and Bracteus, um, Euphorbia milii. And then I don't know what was here. Something didn't make it. And the client stuck a sunburst aeonium right there. So yeah, we'll, we'll fluff that up uh, and make this look a little bit better. It's kind of a hillbilly smile right now. 
So this is a very, very tight courtyard. Again, thank you, coastal trade winds and breezes. Um, I planted a Pilosoceros azurus in this pot, not knowing if it was going to do well. I, it's very shady back here, so I thought it might lose its color, it might rot, it might, you know, stretch for, toward the sun and go go wonky on me. But look, it's perfection. I'm so thrilled. More of the mangaves to divide. Um, Charlie's mosaics are just spectacular back here on these walls. The Sansevieria is doing great. The Ruticope, uh, those aloes are doing really well. This is Aloe Grenadiensis, the really green one. And I thought it might do well back here because I'm not really interested in it coloring up. Uh-oh, though, you know what? Looky here, Han, these Ruticopes have aloe mite. Look at that. Crap. Okay, so plan B. We're going to have to dig out these Ruticopes and dispose of them because aloe mite is a disease that does spread to other aloes. So I think that we'll have plenty of stuff. Um, once we get things cut up and divided that we can put in its place. Oh, and look at this. Look at this wart cough. Do, you know, in the shade here, the leaves kind of turned under. And I just love it. I just think it's so beautiful. This is Aeonium Silk. This is the one I just mentioned out front that looked great. Back here, it's gotten a little leggy and it doesn't look as good. So this I need to change. And this Caprosma, this isn't a succulent. This is a succulent compatible plant that I just love working with. Don't love the way it's hanging out here yeah. on the sidewalk. So I'm gonna try to dig this up and maybe move it back here. And then after we cut these Aeoniums, keep them kind of low profile. Um, <laughs> this sunburst is just got too heavy and fell over. So, you know, what we'll do with that is just cut it and then we'll reset the head. So that's how you do that. And fix it. If your succulent stands up, you have done your job. There, better, fixed it. Okay, then we'll go through the house into the back. Here's my classic combo, the Pacopodium lamarii and little baby barrel cactus because every garden needs a phallus spectacular it's so cute i love this this is amazing the growth just insane we did get some scale on this crassula or maybe it's a caudal this is a cotyledon see you can see all of those white scars it got infested at some point so this is now i mean the bugs have moved on but this is cosmetic damage. So we're going to have to decide if we want to keep this or replace it with something else. Uh, more of those mangave, but look at how the Portolacaria afrovirigata is weaving through the plant. I just love that. I mean, and, and this is all subjective. You know, I love this. You don't have to. Uh, do you? But I think this is great. I am going to size it, though, because the client would like to see less. It's blocking all the light. That's right, it's blocking all the lights. Then over here, this is a hot spot microclimatically, and I told the client she needs to pump up on her watering because this is also indicative here of not enough water. See how desiccated these plants look. They just look so sad. So if your plants look like this and you, you touch the soil and the soil is dry, then for heaven's sakes, water. Uh, this striata, um, threw all of its energy into the bloom and all of the under leaves died back. So we'll pull that out, clean it up and reset it and just fluff these up. Another good way to check if you can or should water is your little, you know. Oh, the saucer? Yeah, the saucer. Yeah, is there water in the saucer? Because if there's water in the saucer, then good. You're, you're good. But if your saucer's dry and the plant, you know, the soil around the plant is dry, then by all means, Give them a drink. So another successful day of maintenance. The most rewarding thing that I think I have ever done is maintenance, especially with help. Today I had Mallory and Hannah. Greg came and fixed an irrigation problem and ran and got us some rock. I spread a couple extra bags of top dressing around just to kind of fluff it up. 
and you know we tore out more mangabe than we left behind um, for whatever reason this plant just absolutely loves it here in this garden so let's see in here you know we didn't have a whole lot to do did we yeah, Hannah deadheaded in here, and that's it, right? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah, I popped in some fresh rock. This Millie I Ready Red is just stunning. Um, we did have Greg turn the irrigation up here. It was only going off twice a week for five minutes. It's drip, so we upped it to 10 because things were looking a little stressed. Uh, I also sprayed all of the plants with bare home defense or I'm sorry ortho home defense it's a spray pesticide I use chemicals on projects or maintenances where I'm only going to be here once or twice a year so everything's taken care of we did have some aloe mite on some ruticope which we threw away but we had enough of other leftover things to fill in the gaps so that was not a non-issue one thing that I wanted to point out that is doing so great in this garden, and I'm so pleased with, is the aloe starry night. This is a little aloe that I get at Oasis Water Efficient in one gallon cans. It's just basically one head. And I've never seen it thrive the way it does here in Coronado. I've got some here, a little stand of it here. Um, some over there and it's just as happy as it can be. Also, if your petalanthus looks like this right now, it's not really leafing out, just throw more water on it. It's the growing season, it'll love you and it will leaf out almost overnight. Ah, uh, what else? Um, oh, Hannah tightened this up over here. This looks amazing. She cut the ruchia off of a rock that was completely covered. It was just buried and reset all of those cute little sedums, added some little crassula ovatas, and just tightened up that tapestry. Look at that sunburst aeonium, the variegation on that. It's so beautiful. That's another plant that has done spectacularly well in this garden. These are leftover mangaves and a couple of bromeliads that the neighbor is going to take and put in their garden. And I went through here and my, my gosh, you guys, I honestly, that it was like this high and this wide. I took more out than I left in. Um, just amazing. I still can't believe how much I took out of here, but it just, it aired it out. Uh, I thinned out the bromeliads. I thinned out the jaguar. I trimmed some of the creeping fig that was flopping. I moved the Tradescantia from the front to the back. That's that purple wandering Jew plant. Over here, we've got a zipper plant and some beautiful bromeliads. In this Crassula ovata, I decided that I would work with it kind of, I'd bonsai it. You know where I, I talked earlier about how I don't like the trunks and I'll, I'll pull these plants up and cut them off and reset them. I'm loving the bones of this one. And it does get a little bit of shade here, so it's gonna tend to be a little leggier. So I just opened it up and laced it out and we'll see what happens with that. Okay, we'll go to the back now. Okay. Here in the backyard, Hannah took a different approach to this mangave. They're, they're just so beautiful and none of them have bloomed out. We didn't want to dig it all up and break it up. So Hannah just trimmed. She trimmed off errant leaves and, and thinned it. Then she took and put a cut on the leaf, an angular cut that kind of mirrors the natural formation of the leaf. So you can do a blunt cut or you can angle it. It's really a personal preference, but I really like what she did there. It's very artistic. And here I took out a few plants. The cotyledon just was too leggy. It was too shady back here. It wasn't, wasn't loving it. Uh, we put in another Crassula undulata in its place. I cut up some of the Aeonium silk and reset them. I moved this Caprosma back. It was in the front wasn't loving it in the front. 
and we cut up and reset a lot of the mangabe here because these things were literally covering up, covering up the low voltage lighting. So now the lights will go on. You'll be able to see Charlie's beautiful mosaics. And back here in this little sunny courtyard, Mallory really did a beautiful job of tidying up these pots. We took out a few things that were just taxed. I mean, they were just really struggling. They were starting to get mealy bug and just not looking good. This um, aloe striata, we took out limbed it up, cut off all the dead leaves and reset it. It looks 100% better. And we added some new little sedums to these pots. We also, or Mallory laced out this wonderful little succulent ivy. And I've instructed the homeowner to water this a little more frequently than she was doing. Here, thinned out again. I didn't dig this mangave all the way out. I just loosened it from the roots and pulled off pups, which are going to the neighbor. The, the light is now exposed here so that they can get, get a good um, view of the beautiful talavera they've hung on the wall. Look at the size of this sunburst. I'll get in here for scale. And it's not showing any signs of blooming out either. Look at all those cute little new leaves coming. This is so beautiful. Aeonium sunbursts are lovely to plant and mass around crassulas, aloes, cotyledons, things with, that are tough and have muscles that will hold them up because they are arboretums and they get so heavy. And when this crassula ovata gets to be too rangy, we will move it out of the way and give the barrel cactus more room to shine. But I love the barrel cactus here because it's really the only thing with structure in this space. This is just a madhouse of rioting color and texture. And I mean, it's fabulous, but I think that the barrel really anchors it. Um, our little phallus, I retop dressed with some fresh rock. And uh, yeah, that's my story, I'm sticking with it. So like I said, it's been a wonderful day of maintenance. I thank you all so much for subscribing, for joining. Uh, happy Pride this month. Be sure and check out the really fun swag in the shop and have a fantastic day in the garden. Bye guys.